DJ Event Planner. Electra Voice. DJ Trivia and DJ Bingo. ProX Direct. NLFX Pro. Promo only. Odyssey cases. Perfect portals. JMOS lighting. Instant DJ requests. And our DJ and TV insiders. This is John Young from DJ and TV. Thanks for watching. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Tuesday night music show. I've been on hiatus, had stuff going on, but I'm back. <clears throat> Just in time for everybody to start enjoying their summer and not tune into anything on social media. Smart, right. Huh? Right. Yeah. yeah. Howie, Howie, uh, I noticed something about you that I haven't noticed. What? One, your camera looks great. I don't know if you got a new camera, new lighting, or what you have. No, it's just this standard uh, C920. It's what I have, but you look yeah. better than I do. But what I noticed about you is that your hair is getting long again. Oh yeah, I she, just she show him because you always got the hat on. Just kind of turn your head and look at that. He's getting the hair back. Well, I mean, I'm I'm actually surprised, you know, with the treatments I went through with the cancer, you know, uh, yeah. that I got it back. Um, I'm gonna cut it though. It's just no, yeah. don't, don't. When I met Howie and I tell people this, they don't believe me. The guy had a ponytail down to his butt. Yeah, and I'm like, did. no, he didn't. I'm like, oh yeah, I did. I did, but because you always you, know, you always just see you forward. <laughs> but when 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 I would comb my hair during the treatments, I mean, oh my god! You ever try to clean out a brush that's like this much ball of hair? It's like <laughs> I was like, you know what? I'm going to the barber, go cut it, cut it. I accept it as long as I live. I don't care if I have the ponytail. I had I had that ponytail for forty years. I say you keep rocking it. Wow. Yeah. You I think so? Keep rocking it. I yeah, I, I do. But yeah, I do you? But I I like it. I like it. Yeah. I mean, it's well, good. You know what? Curly. That's exactly what Lori said. She said, "You're not going to cut that, are you?" And I was like, mm, "All right." Always okay. do what makes her happy. Um, that's, that's oh. the key to life. That's the key to happiness. Oh, boy, don't I ever? Yeah. Right. Yeah, and I had a busy weekend like you did, working on the uh, truck. Got oh, yeah. Running. Yeah. New starter, new belt, change the oil, all that stuff like that. You know, usual, like, okay, you know, everything's done for, you know, till next summer. I mean, it's gonna be, yeah, that's good. No, I mean, I, I only put like 2,000 miles on the truck, but, you know, and the oil's like, oh, we're for 10, th I'm like, I don't care. You know, well, with all this, yeah, with all this maintenance you're doing, we might not break down on the New Jersey Expressway this time. We we probably won't. The, everything possible that bolts onto the engine is new. Speaking of cars, Jay just came back from the Motor City. Yep, Detroit, Motor City, Detroit. Yes, Detroit. He did. yes. We're doing car theme tonight, and we'll get to that in a minute. But a lot of uh, cars in Detroit. Well, they, they make them around Detroit anyway. Yeah, yeah. But I was surprised how many old cars. Yeah, oh, it's that time of year. Like hot rods. Like a lot of guys driving yeah. like a ton of Man. old, I don't know why, but just a bunch of old Malibus, Chevelles. Well, nice. Why were, why were you there in Detroit? Um, I was there for a show called Movement that happens every Memorial Day. It's mm -hmm. going, been going on for probably 20 some odd years. Yeah. Detroit, a lot of people think of Detroit, you think Motown. Mm -hmm. I think R&B, but Detroit is technically the founding spot for techno music. Kevin Sanderson. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's credited Derek yeah. Mays yeah. and Derek Carter, and it's credited as this is the home of techno. Right. Well, I mean, this is a massive, massive festival. It takes place, if you've ever been to Detroit, at Hart Plaza, mm -hmm. which is right on the water. Looking yeah, just out. south of downtown, right? Yeah, 
Exactly. Yeah. Right on the water. Beautiful spot. Um, and it's big. I mean, it's Richie Houghton played the first night as the headliner um, to close it out. Like everyone in the techno field was there. Yeah. Two Chains was there because they usually bring in like at least one solid hip hop sure. act. The mm -hmm. last time I did this a few years ago, the closing night, the main stage, which is the biggest stage, was um, Wu Tang Clan. Wow. The side stage was Diplo. Another side wow. stage was Rez, and the other side stage was Dubfire. But it's it starts at two and goes till midnight. And we had a tent with sweet water. So it was us and Korg and In Music and ADJ and mm -hmm. Erica Synth and a Moog style company and just different companies within this tent. So as people would come into the venue, anyone and everyone could come in the tent. So you've got, I mean, I don't know, like 50,000, 60,000 people a day there. Oh my and God. we were next to one stage, which the last day was yesterday. It runs Saturday, Sunday, Monday. So the last day, Monday, had the best lineup on the stage next to us. And I mean, it's a good 20,000 people going down towards the stage. But didn't and they it, used to call this Techno Fest years ago? I don't know. I've only known it as movement. I, I that's what Joe Fugini told me. Uh, it, that could, I mean, he's local. Yeah. He would know more than Right, I. yeah. He's in Farmington yeah. Hills. Yeah, yeah. Or, by good. the way, there are no farms or hills in Farmington Hills. I, there, there you go. <laughs> yeah, it's one. It's one we of those. Killed them all. Where, yeah. You know, were, it's, were you um, were you in a situation like Brian was, where you were in the Sweetwater tent? People would walk by to see the main stuff, and you would play there. Is that, or were you a demonstrator? No, I was really more of a demonstrator. Um, mm. the, and the tent was set up right at the entrance. Last time mm. I was there, it was set up probably 100 feet in and over on the walking into the festival over on the left. This year, we were directly at the entrance on the right, which probably helped or hurt us. It hurt us in that people coming in were shooting in to go towards all the stages. It helped us in that people that were milling around would see it and come in. Yeah. So it was, it was busy all four days or all three days. I got there Friday night, did set up. And then Saturday, I worked alone. So I got there at 10, worked till 8. Then Sunday, Monday, another DJ flew in from a gig in Atlanta and worked with me. So I had somebody with me Sunday and Monday. Right on. It, your schedule gets uh, thrown way off because you arrive on a Friday. You're okay figuring out today's Saturday, but it's the Sunday, Monday that gets confusing because Monday is Memorial Day. Mm -hmm. You think it's Sunday again. So it's mm -hmm. one of those like, what day is it? You know, but it was fun. I mean, you know, there's, there was a lot of great DJs who I'd never even heard of. Nice. So I did a lot of Shazamming and have some really, you know, people that if I see them in my area, I'll definitely go support them. Cool, fun crowd. Yeah. Awesome crowd. Yeah. No attitude, no problems. Right. No Just fun. These festivals are like that. EDC is the mm -hmm. same thing. Yeah. Even the police like work in EDC. I think I saw one incident where a girl, I think she just fainted from the heat because it was really hot sure, yesterday. Yeah, of course. Um, mm -hmm. And they had probably like four medics and like six cops right on her. Right. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I felt really safe. Um, it was a great show. The crowd was really fun. It's a very mixed crowd compared right. to most festivals. Right. And mm -hmm. Detroit definitely supports, you know, they hustle harder as the <laughs> t-shirts yeah. say. I, I, yeah. I love, I love Detroit. I love seeing it's a great all city. of the things right. that are happening downtown and the new sporting uh, venues and mm -hmm. concert venues. And it, it's yeah. just, it's really nice That'd to see. Happy. We were right at, I stayed at the Westin last time I stayed at the Marriott Renaissance, which is on the river. Uh, so you're, you're parallel to the Hart Plaza. So you come out of your hotel and you just walk like a block down and you're at Hart Plaza. With the Westin, you're about a mile and a half away. So the beauty was I got to go by like the Guardian building, which is this beautifully architect building. Looks like it's from the turn of the century. Yeah. Just really ornate. All the architecture. And yeah, like, it's amazing. But then the yeah. Beavis building and yeah. they're famous for their Coney dogs. And I remember watching Anthony Bourdain when he was in Detroit and he ate a Coney dog at Lafayette's. Well, Lafayette's is right next to all American Coney dog. So that mm -hmm. the two biggest places are literally next to each other. And all mm -hmm. I could think of was like Philadelphia. Yeah. With with the the cheese cheese stick. Stick. Yeah. What's the deal with the stuff being right on top of each other? Like, right. I don't get this, but yeah, hey. so it was, yeah. it was awesome. 
<laughs> no, it's it's a great city. I, I love yeah, Detroit. It really is. I've, I've, had, I've been, been in a few years. I need to get back. It's it's a great city. You know, yep. I, I said we had a car theme, and it will finally, <sighs> 10 minutes in, we'll get to our, our point of what I was talking about. I, I DJ'd a car show on Sunday. And yeah. it was Sunday morning at it st- I started at eight, so I had to be there at like six, which means I had to be up at like five thirty. That was some conditioning because anybody who knows me knows that I am not a morning person. So oh, I was conditioning okay. myself like none of us are. <laughs> no, well, that's why we do this. So I've been conditioning myself for weeks to be up and alive for this. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it was it was crazy even before that. I mean, I had all kinds of personal things going on, and won't even get into it. But uh, he, I did a video, and I haven't posted it yet. It's it's in the, it's ready to go. I'll make it go live after this broadcast. But I posted a playlist from my event, and I guarantee you that most people will look at or hear my playlist as I give it song by song and think to themselves, this was a car show. Really? Cause I don't do what most people do with car shows for music. Except for us. We, I don't, I do not. The, the people in the fifties that you would think you would play for they're they're dead. Yeah, they're pretty much dead. Or I don't know. <clears throat> like my mom. Okay. She's 81. And by all rights, you would think that she would be listening to, you know, more of the doo wop 50s stuff, but she totally would rather hear something from the 70s or something from today. I mean, not everybody's, you know, thinking like right. that. I feel well, like, I don't know if you've ever done uh, car shows, Jay. Have you ever yeah. done anything like that? I've done them. Yeah, I have. Well, it last car show I did, you know, it was the biggest hit was the 80s because those people from the 80s are in their 60s yeah yeah and they're the ones that are buying those cars I'm, i think I'm it's thinking, easy to default to play beach boys and 409 and well i did play that I, I did it was requested oh. though <laughs> yeah but see i think it's very easy if you say to the average dj i'm doing a car show they're gonna go to like oh i'll play gary newman cars i'll mm-hmm. play queen i'm in love with my car like they'll just go down the car song or even the car, the car. Yeah. Car theme songs. Yeah. Yeah. But I think oh, it's like yeah. any gig, you have to read the crowd in front of you and kind of. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Now, now, yeah. I, I'll, I'll talk more about the music that I played, but well, you, you got a lot of compliments though. I did. I did. But yeah. th- th- there's something that I, I really haven't, I guess said publicly, I thought I would do it here on DJ and TV. Okay. Breaking that news. is, they paid the same amount of money for me to DJ this car show as somebody would a basic six hour wedding. I didn't discount it. And a lot of people who are in the know know that anybody who inquires about a car show, they're looking at a budget of 350, 400 bucks. I mean, that's just what it is. 500 max. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, I I, I will say this. And and this is me being brutally honest about it. I was lucky to get in at my asking price at my normal rate. I lucked out because the organizers for this car show, not, not the, not the people who were writing the checks, but the organizers for the car show was actually my late friend, Mike guy's son, Mike guy, the one who mm-hmm. laid all these records on me right. in the 1200s yeah. who passed away. Just cancer. passed away. Yeah. Well, four yeah. years ago we did. This is his son who organized the show. Oh, he's in, I know what I'm thinking of. Yeah. With the, with the big yeah. truck lifted truck. Yes. Yeah. He's involved okay. in now, the Wisconsin now, yeah. truck takeover enthusiasts. These are a great group of guys who, They just have trucks. They're not like necessarily custom trucks. Some of them are lifted or whatever. But during the pandemic, what they did was they hosted free birthday parades for any kid who had a birthday and they couldn't go have a party for him or anything, couldn't have anybody over. So they give him a truck parade down the street. And it was just a really nice gesture. They raised money for uh, this, this 
that is. next event they're doing they're raising money for like the the canine unit they're, they're very civically minded people they're, they're good people it's a good organization and they've taken over for this this car show and they had their trucks there too well of course andrew's like well i got a dj he's this guy and you're just going to give him what he needs and they reluctantly agreed to pay my asking price because most of the time they were you know paying 350 400 bucks for a dj i think that's the price everywhere because so, i've gotten a call for one and yeah. that's what they offered me i'm like no yeah, yeah. They, they don't typically do much yeah so the reason i've even bringing up the money part and i'm not giving you dollar amounts because that's doesn't matter it's just not 350 400 dollars it's it's significantly right. more than that right if you are lucky enough like myself to get into an event like this, especially an annual event mm-hmm. at your asking price. I feel like it's in your best interest to set yourself apart from anyone else they've ever had at that $354 price point. Mm-hmm. So what I mean by that is I don't feel like we should go in there and start playing the American graffiti soundtrack as loud as we can through two-way tie caps. Because that's what everybody else does for $350, $400. Would you agree? Yes. Oh, absolutely. I mean, how are, how are they supposed to talk about their cars if they have to shout? Right. And that's my argument. I mean, not only am I DJing car shows, but I attend them. So I'm a builder. You know, there, there are guys out there who just, you know, take their retirement money that they get and they throw $150,000 at a 68 charger that's already done. Yeah. They're at the show. They're not talking much because they don't know much about the car because of how much it costs. Mm-hmm. Right. I like to talk to the builders. I want to learn something yeah. new. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You, we can't have a conversation if we're screaming over, you know, get a job or 16 candles or Charlie Brown. We can't have a conversation. So, the music levels have to be somewhere where people can have that conversation right. and still hear the music. Now, now, now for this, there, there are two things that I, I've done. And, and one thing is I'm using column arrays because I feel like the properties, like, you know, Jay, you have the Evolve 50s, how we, you've had experience with these as well. Oh, many times, yeah. They're mm-hmm. not nearly as mid-heavy. So right. you, can, you can get, people can hear it. They can tap their foot and jam to it, but they can still have a conversation without screaming at each other. And if you had to make an announcement, they would they can hear, hear you. Right. Right. Somebody in the comment section of my first video I posted, uh, it was I believe it was the Gigalog I posted, had said, what are you using these things for? I, I got to use these, these point source, and they meant to a top cabinets because they project further. You're yeah. not the main attraction here. Big, up on a big pole and everything. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. I mean, if you're DJing a massive car show, of course, but if you're just trying to play to a lot or two, you're not the main attraction here. That would be the cars and the people. Let them shine a little bit. Well, you know what? That makes perfect sense. It's almost like doing a wedding and trying to be the star of the wedding. No, right. it's the couple. It's the couple, right? It's Same the principle. Cars. It's the cars that are star, right? Or the, and, and the people they're oh, talking about their cars. Right. Meeting, make, making new friends. I mean, right. it's a community. Yeah. It's a wedding's different. A lot of people know each other at weddings or, or they're there to specifically meet the other family. A car show, everyone's a stranger unless they just see each other at car shows. Mm-hmm. So you're meeting people. Oh, I like your car. I like your car. You're having conversations about things. It's, it's cool in that regard. It's very much a social event. So you need to let it be a social event. Let it breathe a little bit instead of mm-hmm. trying to like, be the main attraction. That's, that's one thing uh-huh. that I did. The other thing I did with the audio, which was by default, which had everything to do with my programming, was I wasn't playing mid-heavy music, like the 50s stuff. That's The recordings aren't great on that. No, More no. 60s and 70s yeah, kind of stuff, you know? Yeah. Which is another conversation, but it, it did help. I wasn't mm-hmm. playing the big bopper all night long. Well, right. a lot of those were in mono too back then. So, 
What's base? Uh, <laughs> you know, they only had four channels to work with, and <laughs> they recorded it over the telephone. <laughs> yeah, kind of. <laughs> what it sounded like. Yeah. <laughs> or but, yeah. an Electra voice model seventy five from that's ninety five years old now. Um, you know. Yeah. yeah. It's funny because a lot of people in the and, and these people are not wrong. I'm not saying they're wrong. I, I'm all I'm saying is is that if you want to command more, if you're lucky enough to get it, if you want to keep it, you should probably do something different than everyone else does. Right. So someone had said, I like to play songs from when the car was new. Yeah, that's weird. Well, it, it would I don't know. I, I'm thinking to myself. So if a model A shows up, are you playing, hello, my baby, hello, my honey, hello, my ragtime gal? <laughs> You're not doing that. Let me get you the 95. <laughs> you get the right microphone for it. <laughs> Putting on the Ritz. You're not doing it. Putting You're, on the Ritz. <laughs> yeah. It's happy days in American graffiti all day. <laughs> So I, I guess my only point is, is that, you know, if you're going to come into here, you know, one thing to just keep in mind, if you want to come back and you want to come back and make some money at this, or you're not losing, do something different. If you're doing the same thing that cheap DJ did, what's the incentive of bringing you back at your premium price? Right. Right. Be and different. I mean, I've actually, I've, I've been to car shows where, they're putting the thumb drive in and yeah. they're playing that soundtrack. Like you said, well, sure. um, they're really not doing much. Well, they're not getting paid much to do much. So right. I get right. that. Yeah. I was, I was actually playing to an audience and yeah. well, the, the coolest thing that happened towards the end. And it was several groups of people that I talked to. The question they had was, where are you playing next? That's a very good sign. Assuming that I'm a car show DJ, you know, and I have oh, to break it to him that I'm playing at the casino next. You know, you can come, but there's no car show. <laughs> but they dug it. I mean, it was a completely different vibe, but it was a lot of that, people that's singing. A compliment, though. But, but that's why I'm, I'm probably going to come back next year because oh. I set a bar that yeah. the cheap guy can't hit. Right. Right. If if you're going to demand cash for anything that you do, you must create value to become valuable. Mm -hmm. If you can't do that and you expect money, that's tough, man. That's tough. If you're doing the same thing somebody else can do at a fraction of the price, what's the incentive of ever hiring you again? Yeah. I think there's something to be said for that being the case with every event. Yeah. I think you always have to Absolutely. stand out. Sure. Yeah. But I think the car show is such a narrow field and I've, I've done a couple of them and they were just what you said. It was, you know, we got 300 bucks. It's three hours on a Thursday. It's six to nine, you know, play some car music. Yeah. And, and you're not doing anything on a Thursday. So you show up and you give them their $300 worth. Yeah. And as much as you want to give them a thousand dollars worth and have them go, whoa, you realize the problem is you've already set the bar. So if you kill it, mm -hmm. they're just going to want you to come back for 300. There's no way to kill it and go next time it's 500. Do you think it's possible? And I'm asking, I'm only asking, do you feel like it would be possible to go into an event at an entry level price, kill it and refuse to come back unless you got what you commanded? I would oh, do that. I know yeah, I have you you that. can do would it. Would that be possible? Do you feel? I've done it, it. I think it would be possible, but I question if anything would happen. If there, it would just go like, well, maybe the next guy will kill it for 300 too. Well, maybe, but maybe not. See, what was interesting about this and the, the, the people who were talking to me and I was listening to them, you know, I, I wasn't trying to boost my ego on this or anything like that. I'm listening to them and they're asking me, where will you be? next right we like this yeah totally we, get that we really like this that's oh, cool yeah so that's that, value and, yeah. and if i'm not there hey where was that guy you hey, need to get him happened? back here if you want to see what us back here the guy that was good yeah <laughs> what's going on with that well i i think there's 
you know, all of us as professionals are going to say, this is the value we bring to the event. Others would look at it as we just needed some background music. Why get all excited? Why get, you know, should we be spending this? I, the event yeah. I did two weeks ago or a week ago, Sunday, it was a two hour event. It took three and a half hours to set up and break down for two hours, which is, you know, more than a little weird, 20 lights, this and that. But I went in trying to kill it because mm -hmm. I want this client to come back around next year. Right. And I think she will. Yeah. Now, <laughs> with this one, there's a lot of stuff I'm kind of biting my tongue on because I, I'll go ahead and say it. Okay. Okay. Late in the game, I, I mentioned that there are some people writing the checks and there's organizers. Organizers and me are, are, are a united front. Person writing the check ultimately says what is and what isn't. Person writing the check in the 11th hour tells me that something in my terms and conditions is unacceptable. Oh, red flag. You know what I said to him? Well, thank you for your consideration. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, three yeah. hours later, I got a phone call. And all was on back on again. Stood well, my ground. Stood my ground on all of it. I'm in a very similar situation right now where this August community event, we're like, hey, times have been tough. Like, can you drop your price a little bit? And I'm Ooh, like, gas has been high. I can't. Like, well, I said, I said, no, but thank you for 15 wonderful years. I wish you luck. And I have a feeling I might get a call back. I mean, I thought you called the takeaway. I, I was going to, I, I actually didn't, I still, my heart tells me this gig is not for you anymore. Like I've outgrown them. I yep. gave and gave, <clears throat> gave. And said, well, think about it. And then I listened to the message and they, they want to drop the price. And I'm like, well, uh, everything else is going up no, now. I got to go down. No, Come on. No, no. Yeah. I'm like, I'll, I'll survive. It's a bit like gambling. You don't want to gamble what you can't afford to lose. Well, it's a lot of work for three hours. It's a half hour drive. And then yeah. the set up. And, you know, come on, really? You, you want me for the car show price you quoted earlier? No, I'm not doing that. Well, it's you look at what the outcome is. I mean, I don't know the exact numbers, but I watch DJs get 20,000 people throwing their hands in the air for an hour and a half. And I know that a lot of them made five figures. Right. They flew mm -hmm. in. And they didn't pay for their flights, probably. It was probably part of the whole sure. session. Yeah. Sure. May or may not have spent a night in a hotel. Mm -hmm. They did what they were paid to do. People went crazy. People went nuts. They justified spending three or $400 a person to be there. Right. And in, re and in response to that, they needed ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000. Now, some of them may have made a grand, two grand. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. But right. the good ones at the top, <clears throat> excuse me, the, the numbers just kept going up. And that's... You know, mm -hmm. it's very easy to justify that because if I put Diplo's name on the top of the banner, I'm going to get a big audience to come in. If I put Tiesto and Calvin Harris, I'm going to get a lot of people. And that their negotiation is, you mm -hmm. sold out 200,000 people, I want $100,000. Yeah. And, and there's a negotiation that makes sense. In our world, it's oftentimes difficult to come up with a negotiation point because we're unproven. Or we're trying to negotiate against a variable mm. that we have zero control over because right. I can't put uh, Jay Brandon on a flyer uh, and have everyone show up because and no one's going to care. Gonna show up. <laughs> one come again though. Yeah. And it's hard to sell the future. It's hard to uh -huh. say, but by paying me the next time you do this, it'll be better because I did right. this the first time. So sometimes maybe. you have to blindly go in and just do the do the gig and kill it. Maybe you should sure. get yourself a YouTube channel like uh, Brian here because I heard you know he's you know really you know he's he's got he's a YouTube channel. It. Oh yeah, yeah. It's lit and he's fire. As the <laughs> well, <kids say. laughs> well, going back to what you said earlier, Jay. Uh, that's I mean what I'm talking about going in and and just proving yourself and setting yourself apart 
apart. Yeah. In, in many ways, professionally, musically, performance wise, mm-hmm. it applies to anything you do, mm-hmm. any gig that you do. 100%. Yeah. And 100%. I feel like there's a lesson to be learned here. So that's why I'm bringing it up tonight. Cause well, you know, and we've had this, we've had this battle going back 20, 30 years of we would all be so much better off if we all together joined hands and walked forward instead of right hey man, 200 bucks is 200 bucks. I'm going to take the gig. Well, what you're now telling everyone involved. Mm-hmm. And this is why I've oftentimes been hesitant to do the friends, daughters, birthday parties at their house right right. because you show up as a you know two thousand dollar wedding dj and you do a three-hour birthday party and you crush it and immediately people go to the host not the dj and go my gosh dj is amazing i know two hundred dollars can you believe it well guess what (laughs) try explaining to them that their daughter's birthday party is a thousand right and then you have to you know and this is why i i say this today the same way i said it 10 years ago 15 years ago, and I'll say it 20 years from now, the worst events you'll ever do are the ones you discount. I I will say this, though. They'll blow up in your face, Mm -hmm. or they'll ask for so much more. The second you go, yeah, okay, I'll come down 100 bucks, you're you're done. That's the client that's going to haunt you, and it's going (laughs) to get out, and someone's going to find out, and they're going to be public. I just got them to do this event for this much, and your other clients that are paying you twice that are going to say, why am, I, why am I paying you twice this when you're doing this event? Like, mm-hmm. yeah. Sure. Well, what, what I was kind of talking about with this is, you know, and, and you, you make an interesting point. Yeah. I mean, you had said earlier that, you know, three fifty four dollars $400 seems like the going rate, no matter where you are. That's what they want to pay a DJ or maybe even less sometimes. Mm. Well, what I was talking about uh, is a little different. And I, I think in the regard that, you know what? Maybe playing the American Graffiti soundtrack for two or three hours is worth three hundred and fifty to four hundred dollars. But if you're going to go in for five hours and you're going to really build some value by connecting with an audience, doing something different, giving people a real opportunity to be social, maybe that's worth something more. Oh, I that's agree. kind of what my point was. It, you know, I, I I don't I don't look at us as. Mm-hmm comparing apples to apples to apples. That's just not who right. we are. We're all different. Right. Well, right. let me rephrase that. We should all be different. Unfortunately, sometimes we're exactly the same. And then we wonder why we don't have value. Right. Well, but you remember though, was you know, two or three weeks ago, you said, I'm up in my prices this year. Yeah. You stuck to it and you got it. Oh yeah. oh yeah absolutely and but, but it, it wasn't about the money it really yeah it was but it, no, really it was, it was. it's uh and of course it's it was about the money no but it was it was really about value i'm thinking to myself value yeah that, that's that's yeah. why i wanted up the price it wasn't because i'm the same as every other dj in town it's because i know i'm different right mm-hmm. and i know i have something to offer that others aren't offering not that no one can do it not that I'm the best, because I never claim that, but I'm mm-hmm. certainly better than the guy who plays the American Graffiti soundtrack at every car show. I'm better than the DJ who plays the line dances and the Mobile Beat Top 200 at every wedding reception. Right. I'm different than the guy who brings in, quite frankly, the cheap speakers, not a well-thought-out, empathetic sound system where they're making everybody's ears bleed, where no one can talk at their events. They have to either scream at each other or leave to have a conversation mm-hmm. i'm more valuable than that if those guys can mm-hmm. command this amount of money i can command this amount of money mm-hmm. right that's where that realization came in yeah but absolutely. we're all going to disneyland i just got there a different way if that makes sense yeah. <laughs> i i just think that the one thing that i've always said is there's uh, and I firmly believe this, there's a price cap because I think there's a price where you no longer can comfortably sell yourself. I think there's a, a point where even you start to go, damn, is, am I really worth that much? <laughs> it's not It's not the esoteric, am I sure. worth it? It's the reality of if I go across the country and I take 100 DJs from different areas and the average DJ charges $1,000, can I sell myself for $25,000? 
I might be able to sell two, three, four, five, maybe even eight thousand dollars. But mm -hmm. I think the biggest issue I have with DJs today is the DJs who have been around for three or four years, who have a day job, so they have money to burn to buy gear. They live at home with their parents. You know, there's there's a lot of the backdoor behind the scenes stuff that goes on yeah. and then they charge astronomical money <clears throat> and they get it because they don't need it or care. Sure. Mm -hmm. And I think if you're going to charge a price, you know what? I got one simple ask for anybody that's looking, listening or watching you charge whatever you want. But mm -hmm. if I show up and I ask you why you're worth that, you better have a qualified answer. Don't exactly. tell me because you got evolved fifties and don't tell me because you got a hundred thousand songs. Right. You need to be able to succinctly explain to me why you are worth X for this event. What can, value I, do you bring? Right. If you know your own worth and you can explain it, you're gold. I did a wedding show years ago. We had mm -hmm. just upped our price after seeing Mark Farrell. We were the most expensive DJ company in the room. Mm -hmm. Every bride went around and came back and said, you're twice as expensive as every other DJ. And before they could say another word, I said, ah, it sounds like the other DJs know exactly what they're worth and that's what they're charging. And that <sighs> literally, you saw their eyes roll in their head like, oh, that totally makes sense. He's charging a thousand. I, he's I, worth a thousand. It was, he's charging yeah. 500 because he's not. tiny passive aggressive, but I, I like it. No, no, I no, kind of said passive. something similar to the person writing checks the other day. Yeah. yeah, he made a comment you about something on the table, and yeah. I said, "Well, of course not. You've been hiring three hundred dollar DJs. Of right. course, you haven't experienced this." Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think the biggest, but the one thing I will put to Brian's point, which is excellent, and I tread lightly is my best advice. Don't don't show up at a three hundred dollar event. Ask for two thousand dollars. Get it and make promises you can't keep. Right. Because I'll tell you, yeah. it is the fastest yeah. way to the bottom because they'll just, you prove oh, them yeah. right. Yeah. The event will be 300 bucks the next time they need a DJ. Yeah. You, you charge what you want, yeah. but do it with the understanding that you have to have a punch list of why. Well, that's the whole under promise over deliver philosophy. Right. But, but yeah. that, that I think, I think with weddings and corporate events that works, in a car show or a grand opening where they're looking at us as a utility piece, we're just like we're a, a banner. We're, we're a commodity. We're a banner or yeah. a sign or the DJ yeah. plays to me. I just almost got hired to open a sporting goods store and they wanted eight hours and I gave them a price quote and the woman got back to me very nicely. She goes, I'm really sorry. This is two to three times more than we plan on spending. And I don't think I gave her an over the top price quote. Sure. But I was like, I totally understand. Eight hours? Eight hours. Yeah. Yeah, wow. they wanted it from eight to four Ooh. outside. Ooh. And so I'm like, that's great. But this is the price I need to show up and do that kind of work because I know what it's going to be involved. That means I'm there two hours prior and two hours after. So I'm actually there for 12 straight hours. And I can do nothing else that day, from. which granted was not far. My equipment is being taxed for up to 12 hours, oh, 10 yeah. hours. There, yeah. There's variables, but... I then got back to her and I said, I completely understand. I'm probably coming from a different level than you might be needing or accustomed to. This is what mm -hmm. I'm bringing. And I named everything off. And she's like, we'll seriously consider you for future events. But as I said, for this particular event, our budget is really strict. Can't be used. I did this last year for 9-11. They contacted me in July and said, we're having a massive event in L.A., I oh, remember that. Yeah. 6 a.m. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Yep. 8 yep. p.m. Yeah. You need two DJs. One is in a green room that, where they hear pump up music for two hours. Then they go in another room for two hours. There's two half hour breaks during the day that you can get something to eat. I sure. said, when is load in? Well, you could load in in the morning. Okay. Can I load in Friday? Yes. Are there hotel room allowances? No. Okay, so I can drive to LA, load in, and by the time the conversation's over, I said, I'm gonna send you a price quote, but I'm, I'm saying this with all, the utmost respect. I, I'm not gonna be in the budget you have. She goes, well, we have a very firm budget. I said, and I promise I will be above it. And I will explain in my quote why. And I gave her the quote and I said, 
for me to drive for three hours to LA, do a two hour load in on Friday night, drive three hours home, go to bed, get up four hours later to drive back to LA yeah. to work. Here's your quote. And it was several thousand dollars. And I based it on then I would be working technically for 23 straight hours. Right. If yeah. I loaded in the night before without going up first. Right. I mean, you have to pay for that kind of time. And I said to her, mm -hmm. even at $100 an hour for me to drive there, set up, do the job, and leave. Well, 100 bucks an hour is $2,300. Let's, let's assume a different position. Let's just for fun, okay? Okay. But something kind of similar happened to me to, up to a point. Let's say, Jay, that this client who obviously didn't have the budget for you got your quote, mm -hmm. which included hotel accommodations, gas, time, real world figures. And they went with it. You know what? This is eight times more than we were planning on even thinking of spending. But you come highly recommended. We're going to go with you. If you were to land this job at the money that you commanded without any compromise, right? at that point, seeing how they did the event last year, right? They've done this event before. You're the new guy coming in at eight times or whatever it is, 10 times more than they normally would spend. What do you do to make sure that you're doing this gig next year? I, I think do it the way you would normally do it. I don't, I don't think you ever do a gig based on fee. No, no, no. That's not what I mean. That's you're, you're misunderstanding me. Uh, I, I was just, all, all I was looking for is to say, you know, be professional, be, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, you're I mean, not going to go in and do the same thing that their guy was going to do for no, $400. You, you, do you. you do you. And that's why you're getting that money, but you have to right. be individual. You can't go in with the understanding of what did they do last year? I'll copy that. You have to right. read it the way you read it. Cause I mm. said to her, I go, well, I can save you some money. You don't need a second DJ. I can put a sound system in. You give me a new group of 70 people every two hours, right? Yes. Yeah. So the new group won't know the last group's music. <laughs> right. No. Why don't I just put a two hour mix together that we can play in that one green room area and it repeats every two hours. So there goes the second need for the DJ. But that's one full system running. Now there's a separate system running. And I've done these, it was a charity thing where they're mm -hmm. building meals. I've done these like 10 mm -hmm. times. Mm -hmm. You're on the mic more than you are on the music. And you're yeah. pumping people up. Oh, Table 7 just did their 100th meal. Well, you know, you're, you're the pump up guy. And that's really where you make your money. But if oh, you're well, a shy yeah. DJ, you're in the wrong, wrong venue on that one. But I think, but, yeah, as you said, you always want to try to do better. You do know? something that no one else has done. Something different. Well, and, and that would be difficult at times to come up with because you have to feel it out. I think we all get of course as we go. You don't just start on the red line and go nuts. You have to kind of work your way into it. But there's a lot to be said for manipulation of the event. And what I mean by that is you're dealing with a client. You're dealing with the client's client. You're dealing with the people in the venue. You're there's so many moving parts to a good venue, to a good mm -hmm. event that, mm -hmm. you know, it's not just that, but let's also remember one thing that would have helped you out, Brian, and probably will down the road. The biggest bank account in the room are the people there. Yeah. The grandmother in the back who is like going to the car show and her granddaughter's getting married and she goes, this would that be guy. Fun. Oh, I got a wedding out of this, by the way. I forgot to mention that. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I did yeah. get a wedding out of this. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> Jeez. But see, and then, answer, but here's the best you part. Got that answer pretty quick, Jay. <laughs> right, but here's, <laughs> but no, no, no. And now this goes back to what Brian's deal with the cost is. Now, let's say Brian did this gig for three hundred and he got a wedding out of it. Now, when he goes to the client for the wedding and says twelve fifty, and they go, but you only charge three fifty to do the car show, right? Now, well, you know, it, it's funny you say that because there's so many times that we have said, you know, I can't spend exposure. Yeah, you know, I, I can't do that. You this is the one show bank won't cash it that I, from exposure alone. I probably would have been all right because I did very well in that regard. Right. I made a lot of contacts and a lot of people know my name now. Right. And I'm going to be doing events because of it. The, the thing I had in my head, of course, disappeared. Um, I had a cool reply for something you said. 
and I was waiting for that coda well, where we can I could jump in and say something, but I forgot what I was going to say. It was clever. It was good. I, I, I promise there. you it was good. I gave some moments there where there was room for you to jump. I didn't want to interrupt you, though. I was trying to be polite. No, but I, I had something really good that I was going to say, and I can't remember what that thing was. It doesn't matter. It's just be good. Be, but, but don't do what everyone else is doing. If we all do the same thing the same way, mm-hmm. our value probably isn't going to be very high because we're not unique. If we do things that are unique and good that people like, we have value. I don't know. That's that's just a, my my wasn't about money so much as it was about just don't sit there and be all upset with yourself because you're doing the exact same thing that everybody else in town is doing and you're not getting ahead. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but we we've had this talk in a different show and it came from my buddy Bill in Boston who said when I talk to a guy who's been a DJ for twenty years, you know, it's like wow, twenty years, a lot of experience, a lot of exposure, a lot of time, a lot of work, yeah. a lot of change. But then you start talking to some of them and you realize, wait a second, you've simply done the exact same event. For, for 20 years in a row. For 20 years, years. in a row. <laughs> yeah. and, and that's why it's such smooth sailing because it's like, yeah. I got this. Right. I tell people all the time when they're like, I'm trying to get, I'm trying to up my game. Yeah. And I'm not, I don't want to name names, so I'm not going to do that. But I'm not part of the whole, give me a hundred bucks and I'll tell you what to do crowd. And that's a, there's a lot of that in the DJ industry these days. There's a lot of yeah. the... No. I've been in the game for 10 years. Oh. I'll, I'll tell you what to do. Yeah. yeah. So on a oh free side, God. I would simply do this. Hmm. And I'm being genuine about this. Pick out five things that if you had to describe an amazing DJ at an event, pick five things that you would use to describe them and then aspire to do those five things. So even if this is an imaginary DJ, when you mm-hmm. say do good work, do this, you know, over promise, you know, over out, under promise, over deliver. Under promise, over deliver. Right. It's but, mouthful. But you've got to know what that is. You've got to yeah. actually know. You can't say, I brought a blue laser. Well, so well, what? You, a car show at 10 in the morning. What the hell good is a blue laser? We've done DJ uh, conferences, Jay. Yes. Where the organizers have said, it's going to be awesome. And it's going to be amazing. And it's going to be incredible. And you get there. And there's 50 people there. And you expected 50,000 people there. We've done these well, shows. Well, you know what, Brian? I said this over the weekend. I'm sorry, Harry, real quick. I said this over the weekend to somebody. When you said that, one show came to mind. Now We don't have to say what show it is. Okay. But if you went up to Pulse and said to Christian, what's what the, best the best one? Yeah. show you've ever done? He and I are both going to say the same show. I was actually thinking of a different show, but that's okay. But that's the okay. show I'm speaking of still has same, the, best it, the same same general principle. Yes. Right. Yes. At Parker's in the parking lot. But the point is, the <laughs> reason that it was the best show we've ever done, we got there and there's no crowd. And we're like, what's this? Where's all the people? And at the end of it, we realized the lack of people allowed us to spend 15, 20 minutes with every single. It was attendee. about the quality time. Yeah. And mm-hmm. that that's what changed the right. dynamic. So right. I agree with you that, that can come up, but you make of it what you can. I mean, if you've got a hundred people in a room out of 10,000 rock the crap out of the hundred. You see, I was trying to make an, uh, an over promise and under deliver analogy and, and you blew it. All right, blow it. So never mind. I brought up, you justified I brought up, it. You justified over promising and under delivering. I was trying to make it sound like a bad thing, and you made it sound like a good positive thing. Because you have well, to. You've got to be. Wait, don't you do? Uh, <laughs> you hate cut, Brian. Mute your hearing for a second. You're only as good as your last gig. You've got to do every show like it's the last show. Jay. Pretend you're a freaking rock star. Get in the room and understand you have a job to do. Separate yourself. I don't With think. Help? or eat at my events ever. Why? Because mm-hmm. I separate myself. I'm not going to sit there with a pile of food and get slow and I am. And starts. Uh, totally going to do that. You've got a better metabolism than me. <laughs> no, don't. Young kid like you. I'm crippled. Like I have fat. noticed, though, since, hey, since over the years, you have stopped taking photos of the food and posting them back, to Facebook. Back like you used original to. premise, you and I were both 
in a certain northeastern city where they overpromised oh under delay under delivered and yeah they weren't even close and they, they had sponsors even, involved didn't they yeah oh, oh yeah yeah people yeah. threw money at this didn't they <laughs> and they weren't happy people threw money they were not happy no oh, no they weren't not especially when the ambulance came to take um someone yes. that had overdosed in a way <laughs> You know. Now, the show that Jay's talking about, on the other hand, the organizers recognized that they may have overpromised and underdelivered, so did what they could do to make it right. Yeah, they did. They, they went over and beyond to make it right, mm-hmm. which is all you can do in that case. But it's just best not to do that. Now, I, um, I wanted to bring something up that I don't know. I wasn't here, so I couldn't do a show on it, but. <laughs> We've talked about this a thousand times. I've made the analogy between DJs and comedians. And Mm -hmm. Jay said something very interesting earlier where he was talking about, do you do this? You should just do you. There is a two part George Carlin documentary on HBO that came out last week. Hold on. Caesar's Palace yeah. just te- sent me a text. I won $73 million because I bet everything in the world you'd mention George Carlin. Thank you, Caesar's Palace. Mm-hmm. There read- were people, there, there were several different comedians talking about him who knew him personally. Mm-hmm. And they said that George Carlin reinvented himself throughout his career five times. Yes, right. he did. He came in as kind of the family friendly tonight show guy he did and, he wore a yeah. tie and a jacket short hair right yep. he looked like a, a country star almost the way and then he he, he went and he did the counterculture thing he did the hippy dippy weatherman yep and, and that and then then he did like the 70s variety show thing yeah and then he did this I don't know. At any rate, the evolution of Carlin, the way that he described it was Carlin at the end, like when he finally had kind of completed his metamorphosis, was himself. He was the same guy on stage as he was at home. And Mm -hmm. that was the Holy Grail. Yeah, isn't that I think the great ones always are though, aren't they? I, well, I, isn't that I mean, as as performers, awesome. yeah. That's but awesome. I mean, yeah. when you first started talking about the metamorphosis, my mind went right to Willie Nelson because Willie Nelson started as this yeah. clean cut guy, yeah. who grew into himself, and now at the end of it is He's absolutely himself. himself on and off stage. Yeah, yeah. Johnny Cash was <sighs> himself on and off stage, like the greats, Frank yeah. Zappa. Was himself on and off stage. I think that the real stars in the world, mm-hmm. the real ones, mm-hmm. it's because you're getting them. You yeah. know, I was thinking about this because I'm thinking to myself, wouldn't it be easy just to start off as yourself? You wouldn't have to do all that's, this. That's exactly what I was thinking. Like, But yeah. I get it. You got to go it. through hoops to get success. Well, he, I, you, well, I think he had, in the room. Yeah, you had to jump through the hoops to get the gig to be able to. Yeah. I believe this. I believe this. I thought about it. When I first started DJing, which was a very long time ago, when I got on the microphone, I did the FM radio DJ thing. All right, this next song is, uh, you know. Right. And then I went into this next stage where I was yelling and screaming everything. And I was outrageous on the microphone was, was the next stage. And then I remember going into almost this, I don't know what you'd call it. It was almost an angstful stage where I didn't even like doing what I was doing, but I was forced to do it. And I kept getting asked to do it and I didn't even care stage. And then now I am totally me at a wedding. I am myself. What's different about me when I started and me now? I'm an adult and I've grown as a person. Mm -hmm. When I first started, I hadn't grown as that person yet. But when you grow as a talent and a person at the same time, 
you almost grew up together with your with your alter ego, I guess, who's the stage presence. And eventually, it, she just fades out. The two people become one, and there you are. Well, it's I don't like know. It's the ego thing. Like they're chasing, and one's trying to stay on a path, and the other one's trying to figure out what to do on it. Right. And eventually, you wake up and just go. I think I was right all along. I just should have done this. How many do you, yeah. later? So I've always, I think I've always been me. I never had, I don't look yeah. back on my career and go, Oh, yeah. remember that period where you were? No, it was just because I'm still like a wise guy in the mic. I was telling this <laughs> about kissing under a bridge that didn't exist. Right. That was in 100 years ago. Yeah. That's yeah. 25 years ago. I still yeah. do the some weddings where it's the right room and the right crowd. I still drop that. And I get the best response and I get people coming up at the end of the night going, man, that story about the DJ from a hundred years ago. And I'm like, yeah, it's <laughs> good. It is good. As long as That's you're a very J thing to do. If you're it happy, is. if you believe that and yeah. you left this wedding thinking that's a great thing, cause that happened on the same day, then you know what? Yeah. I did my job. Like Howie. Okay. Yeah. I've known Howie now for a long time. We spent a lot of time together yeah. and, and I, and I can say this with, you know, no anything in my throat or he's a nice guy and he's going to go out of his way to be that nice, cool, accommodating guy for you. And when he's on stage, he's doing the same thing with his clients. He's still that guy. Yeah, of course we all have a bad day, but how he has fewer bad days than most people, but and he's I just a nice also- guy on and off stage. I can you honestly can't say can't uh, I, I have seen both of you throughout the years, over 10 whatever plus years. I guess I'm the new kid on the block, basically. But you guys are the same on and off. You're always the same. I don't care where I see it, whether it's Vegas or, you know, Chicago, Atlantic City. Uh, you're always you're the same on and off stage. You really There's are. There's no persona. Like I, and I have people ask all the time, like DJs that aren't good at presentations will say to other DJs who know me, like, Hey, where did you get that line? (laughs) It's like, like, that's just Jay. (laughs) But like, is there a script? I didn't see a teleprompter. And it's like, no, no, no. That's his strength. That's his thing is that he can just get up in front of a group of strangers. Sure. But if he's, and tell them the truth. And even if there's little lines in here, but I've always had the same ma- the, the same attitude, whether seminars, gigs, whatever. I don't lie to anybody. Right. I don't lie you, to you. you I don't tell do you, you got to buy this. I'm a that. terrible salesman that way. Yeah. But I'm a great salesman because I'll tell you exactly why you need it. Well, <laughs> but I, I, won't tell, I won't tell you you have to buy it. I'll just say, this is why you can use this and it will benefit you. And mm-hmm. I try to come up quick. The night, the time we had the wireless thing in one of our controllers, I went out of the room with a microphone. I said, I'll be right back, guys. Sorry. With an iPad. And I said, hey, is the mic too loud? Okay, so how's that? And I walked in with the iPad and the mic, and I kept touching the iPad. And it took them about 10 minutes, and finally someone's hand went up, and they said, are you controlling the microphone volume from the iPad? I'm like, why? Yes, I am. Yeah. Oh. Yes, yeah. <sighs> well, l- let me ask you this, Jay. Because you've been really and we don't talk about it a lot here but you also play guitar you, you've been a you know musician for a very long time longer than mm. you've been a dj so you've it's probably fair to say at this point in time you've been on stage most of your life and what one yeah. capacity or the other right mm-hmm. if you can remember back to when you first started going on stage think about how you were then what you were thinking what you were projecting to your audience and think about now fast forward to today without talking about a span of years would right. you agree that you've changed 100% a lot from 100%. your from your stage presence yeah 100% because then it was who am i trying to be yes yeah and now it's just i don't know how to be anyone else we know yeah. we know DJs without giving names who are not the same person people think they are oh, when they're yeah. when they're in no. front of a crowd or even on that, social media when you talk exactly. to them in person they're a different person yeah but that's the way they present themselves and that's what they're comfortable with they're, and they're young. young they're young and they're still new at it and it it's takes a lot time. to bite off you you look at the the world of youtube and you think of it as 
you know, what's the big deal? I shoot a video in my house and like, no, no big thing. But when you start racking up views and viewership and subs and you go to shows and everyone knows you and they're dragging and they, oh, can I get a photo yeah. this, this, and this. If you're a shy person, that's a lot to kind of contend with. Yeah. It, so it, I, I think people, humans yeah. in general, we put up that front. And oftentimes that front is the performer. I mean, we've all seen the interviews. I hung out with Al Jorgensen of Ministry. If you know who Ministry is and you yeah. know any of their music, Al Jorgensen is a maniac on stage. <laughs> Off stage, Mellow dude. <laughs> and I were talking about recruiting talent for the Chicago Blackhawks. I, I would argue. I would argue that that like someone like Al, who's a very theatrical performer, is doing exactly that. He's performing. He's right. putting on a theatrical theatrical right. performance. But I think it's still part of him. Right. And of course it is. Him. Right. But I think there's also people that put on a, per, a persona that mm -hmm. isn't anything like them. Yeah. That's oh, like you meet yeah. them later and you're like, yeah. whoa, wait a second. <laughs> you're yeah. not even like you don't even like music. And I hate music. But but you're this yeah. big music guy. Well, I don't care. I oh. hate music. I just I'm making money. So I'm just going to do it. Well, we're, yeah. my point of all this uh, and really is, is if you've made it this far, folks, my point of even bringing this up is simply that. It takes time. I mean, mm. even the greats, it yeah. takes time. You're not going to nail this in 5, 10, 15 years. You're just not going to do it. Oh, but wait a minute. If you buy my uh, thumb drive, uh, you... Oh, mean stop it. <laughs> I, stop I, it I will say this. I will say this. <laughs> if you're uncomfortable <laughs> because of what you're doing, then it's not what you should be doing. Like if you get on the mic and you feel Ooh, like, hey, point. what's yeah. up, everybody? How's it going? If you're not comfortable being that guy or that girl, then that's not what you should do. Don't ever let the no. audience dictate no. what you should do no. because Brian's the best at this. You're the host. The audience looks at you like mm -hmm. Jimmy Fallon, Jay Leno, Seth Myers. Mm -hmm. They only know your role as someone commanding the audience. Mm -hmm. You need to do just that. Whether not it's the best at that. silent. But you, when you, they view you as that role. Oh, I'm best at something else, but this is a family show, so we can't get into that. But you know what I'm saying? You and I have had this talk about how the audience views you as the Jay Leno. Like, they don't know who you are. He was talking he, about cars, I think. Um, but, oh, yeah, cars, too. Of course. <laughs> but that's the thing. So be comfortable in what you're Waxing doing. Waxing cars. Yeah. yeah. If you're not comfortable, <laughs> you're not doing it the right way because you got to be comfortable. It's a family show. Yeah. We got to go, guys. We're, we're, we're out of time. Thank oh, you so much for joining us. Jay. Happy 2023, by the way. I don't know when the show's airing. <laughs> <laughs> Rest in peace, Howie Darkstar. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> wow. wow. Oh, Things okay. just went left really fast. Well, yeah. Goodbye. It was nice knowing you all. <laughs> Please it remember. was fun while it lasted. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>